morning, everyone. Welcome to the Step Outside podcast. My name is Katie Donaldson. I'm the communication specialist for the School of Natural Resources at the University of Tennessee Institute of Agriculture. Thank you for joining us today. And our guest today is Ash Cable. Would you please tell me your major? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm actually a PhD student. So um, I'm a, uh, my major is natural resources and um, I work with bats, so that's my concentration. And recently, you um, went on the study abroad trip, which was for the Wildlife um, Fisheries Sciences 425 course, mm -hmm. and it was Wildlife, Tropical Ecology, Conservation, and Field Methods, and it was in Belize. Yes. So if you wouldn't mind, just kind of tell me a little bit about that trip. So um, I went with Dr. Adam Wilcox, and him and his wife, Dr. Emma Wilcox, have been leading this trip for almost a decade, and Emma didn't go this year, and she gave me the opportunity to go in her place. Um, so I um, had the opportunity to be um, an instructor of record for the trip and um, teach the students as like a co-instructor with Adam. Um, and we, we were in Belize for two weeks and we traveled around to different field stations and we saw um, all kinds of different cultures and um, uh, different we learned about different field methods of how to survey for different types of wildlife and we learned about agroforestry and like sustainable um, sustainable agriculture and illegal logging and all these like um, aspects of like tropical ecology and conservation that we sometimes we don't really see up here. And I know part of the course, like you said, we don't really see that up here, but part of the course was taking the methods that we use here yes. in Tennessee and applying them there in Belize. Yes. How did that go? It went really well. So um, in wildlife, like, like you said, a lot of the methods we do, we use for surveying um, wildlife, we do use like universally. So we learned how to do point counts to survey for birds, and we learned how to do mammal transects um, to um, record what mammal species are in the area, and we learned how to do um, t timber inventory, so uh, we do that here. Um, crocodile spotlighting we don't really do that but we spotlight animals to see you know to, to count them sometimes um, and we did um, bird mist netting and learned how like we catch birds with mist nets and how to um, ban them and then we also did a night of um, bat mist netting um, where we caught um, bats a lot of um, fruit eating and nectar bats and then we did um, a stream ecology workshop um, where the students uh, surveyed with like these um, um, nets. Um, they surveyed the stream and the, the uh, insects and the in invertebrates in the stream to like determine how healthy the stream was. And we do all, we do all that here in the U.S. too. So one of the animals you mentioned, a crocodile, which we have alligators here yeah. versus crocodiles there. Um, could you talk about the different animals that you came across while you were in Belize? Yes, the diversity is incredible because it's like Central America. Um, the birds are just amazing. There are so many different types and some of them are ones that we we have here and like migrate there in the winter um, or they just have really large ranges and they are also there. Uh, but there are some really crazy birds like for example like they have a, a species of turkey um, it's called um, they're calling it the Yucatan um, turkey but it's also called like the oscillated turkey and it's got like all these like colorful feathers and it's like ridiculous like how amazing it is <laughs> like compared to like our like plain um, brown turkeys yeah <laughs> I immediately like sent a picture to my grad student friend who's studying turkeys and was like look at this turkey <laughs> it was pretty cool um crocodiles were scary um, <laughs> but in like a cool good way um the bats are amazing like because he most of our bats here are just like insectivores at least all in Tennessee we only have insectivorous bats so seeing like bats that eat fruit bats that eat nectar um, and some insectivores too like that was really cool um, 
the monkeys there are um, uh, sneaky <laughs> and uh, kind of mean sometimes. Like they'll they they like come out of nowhere and like to check you out, and then they're they're like swinging from the. Uh, so we saw spider monkeys and howler monkeys. So the spider monkeys would like come up to us like in the canopy, and um, they would be like swinging and like throwing like throwing sticks at us like everything that they touch would just like fall down like <laughs> fall down on us so um but they were cool the howler monkeys are so loud like it's hard to even describe how loud they are um but that was crazy um what else i saw yeah. some leopards in the pictures oh, yeah. that you showed me they're not leopards jaguars they are jaguars okay. yes Thank yes you. They're down there, like, the jaguar is, um, like, a sacred animal um, to the Mayans. And so uh, there's a lot of Mayans um, still living in Belize and, like, carrying on their culture. And that was, like, really cool to hear the stories of, like, the jaguar. And um, we did, we went to the Belize Zoo and we got to, like, feed feed them. Well, we didn't feed the jaguars, but, like, the zookeeper would, he put, like, you know, the chicken up to the uh, fence and the jaguar would like jump up and like lick it and it was crazy <laughs> and the students got to feed um, the tapirs and that was a big hit uh, because th- these tapirs are crazy they're they're called uh, mountain cows oh. down there um, and you don't you see pictures of them online but you just like don't know how big they are until you see them and then they're they're related to horses so I don't know if you've ever like fed a horse with like a carrot and like it does the weird like lip thing where it's like <laughs> you know what I'm talking about you know, like it kind of lifts it and then it yeah. yeah well the tapirs do like the exact same thing it is so oh. weird <laughs> <laughs> but the students really like that Speaking of students, what was it like being an instructor versus being a student on that trip? For me, it was like amazing. It was kind of like a full circle moment because like I did a study abroad um, 10 years ago actually in 2013. Um, And I just remember like on my trip, like thinking um, this would be awesome like to one day like lead trips like this and I remember it like changed my life just the way that I see things and um, so for me to like for Emma and Adam to give me the opportunity like I was I was really grateful and like it was awesome like be like teaching the students and um, most of I really didn't get have to teach them a whole lot because we would go to these field stations and the um, like the guides would teach them and and I was learning like with them but then like just to be there like to like chime in with you know this is this is how they do it here um this is what we do in the U.S. and like kind of compare like that was really cool um and then like the whole time I was just like making sure students were okay like handing out band-aids and Benadryl and uh, hydrocortisone creep and oh, yes. so it was like <laughs> keeping them healthy <laughs> yeah just like making sure everyone gets out of Belize without like a... that's important it's very important yeah I'm sure their parents really appreciate it yeah that. <laughs> as far as the teaching goes and you talked about how you also learn things um and you talked about the different cultures you experienced mm-hmm. so how varied were the cultures just kind of at all the different field stations that you were at they it is um incredible like how culturally diverse belize is like no matter so when we were up at the north um and there was um like there are people who are um more of like um hispanic maya descent and then uh, in certain parts of the country and then other parts of the country there's more um like african descent um, and, um, my, like, the, and then if, when we were at, uh, Yakshite, um, when we were at Yakshite, uh, like, that community is a Mayan community, and so there were a lot of descendants of, of, uh, the Mayans, and we got to, like, 
hear about how they're um, being like stewards of the land down there. And we got to visit um, a Maya women's group where we learned like how they how they cook traditionally. And um, when we arrived, the students did like a traditional dance with them. And then they took us in and they, they taught them how to make like chocolate and tortillas. and. Um, and then we had a, a meal together and it was it was really cool we learned about like different how they use the, like different parts of the plant um, for medicine but also like how they cook like all the parts of the plant it's cool speaking of just food in general I'm a big food person yeah <laughs> uh, do you recall your favorite meal on that trip yeah, I think my favorite meal is um, like the standard meal that they have down there, which is like a stewed chicken um, with uh, rice and beans or beans and rice. <laughs> and um, is there a difference? There is a difference. Okay. And um, Adam was like quizzing the students on like which which was which, and but and the answer is like rice and beans has more rice, and beans and rice has more beans. <laughs> so, oh, and then sometimes sense. they're served like separately, but sometimes they're like mixed together. But, I, yeah, huh. it was really good. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like it. You talked about how you studied abroad in twenty thirteen, and then you recently went on this trip. What would you say to students who are considering studying abroad right now? If if you can, um, like if you're financially and and other otherwise able to do it, then I definitely think that you should. Um, it it like really opens up your worldview, um, your perspective to like challenges that are going on like outside of the U.S. and in in the U.S. we just have a very limited view of like conservation and 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 like traveling to other countries or even for other study abroads not related to conservation but just like whatever your field is we have a very limited view of that and seeing like those other perspectives like it really like grows you as a person and I think it like grows you like professionally also so one final question as far as conservation goes um you were talking about all the different cultures. Is there anything they do differently that you think would benefit us here in Tennessee or in the U.S. in general? Yeah, definitely. Um, there are things that we can learn from from um, Belize and other countries. Um, so tourism, for example, is uh, one-fourth of their economy, um, and a lot of that um, goes towards funding these, like, field stations and um, conservation down there and here a lot of our um, conservation is funded by like hunting and fishing licenses and so branching out a little bit beyond just that like having all our eggs in one basket of like hunting and fishing licenses cannot is not going to be good um, especially as less fewer and fewer people are hunting and fishing like we should we should consider like these other avenues, you know, like ecotourism, um, and yeah, and other things that maybe we just haven't thought of yet. Is there anything I haven't asked you that you think people should hear about? I don't think so. We had students, well, we had students from um, multiple programs across UT on the trip, so a lot of them were in our School of Natural Resources, uh, either as like wildlife students or forestry students, um, but we also had like students from um, uh, ecology and evolution and uh, animal science. So it w- it was kind of a um, a group a group from different disciplines, and so I don't think that you necessarily have to be in wildlife and fisheries to you know go go and enjoy this trip. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Thank you, Ash, for coming on the Sub Outside Podcast.